And we are live. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This is the uh, My Podcast World Blab. Uh, I'm Scott. He's Gordon. And uh, welcome. So if you've got any questions, just pop them into the sidebar there. Be happy to answer any questions relating to podcasting. And uh, Gordon, do you want to have, do you want us, you know, welcome to the show. Any Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Gordon. I want to welcome everyone and thank you for your patience for, for waiting. I, I promise you it was a good wait. Um, you know, Scott, for I know some of the folks that they, on here, they know you, some of them don't. And um, maybe just very quickly, Scott, if you could maybe share with them a little bit about your background, just very quickly, uh, what you do, how you got into podcasting. Be delighted to. 2004 awesome. podcasting started in the fall. It was the first time anyone saw the word. And in the spring of 2005, I started podcasting. And I, to my shock and amazement, uh, I just published the 300th health podcast with my co-host Martin Patella last week. And I'm rolling very close to my 300th um, internet marketing podcast too. So. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I've been podcasting. I've been co-host, executive producer, or single host of over 40 podcasts. If you go to iTunes, put Scott Patton in, one T in Patton, you'll see they all pop up. And I've been teaching it for that same period of time. And about two years ago in the fall, uh, the people that make the Starbucks app asked me to come in and talk to their marketing department about um podcasting because they thought that it would be good for them to do some podcasting mm. and they got so excited that the chief marketing officer turned to me and said you need to do a video course on podcasting so i did and uh, it was the best thing i've ever done all of a sudden everybody i know is podcasting they're all excited about it and uh, and it works out really well so that's a little bit about me in the world of podcasting awesome thank you so much scott uh, we got a question here from um, from who is this? Somebody, Jerry. Jerry he said, um, "What's the ideal time for a podcast? Often, what would you recommend?" I would recommend that you do it weekly, and that you decide to to release it at the same pretty much day and time every week. So, if you decide that one o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Mondays when you're going to do it, great. Now, the beauty is is that most podcast platforms and certainly my podcastworld.com have a schedule or function so you don't have to do your podcast at noon on monday and then have it go live at one o'clock on monday you can do all of your your whole months all at once and then you can schedule them throughout the month to appear whenever you want or you can just do it a few days in advance and have it come out when you want to come out but uh, the consistency is really important because even though it's information on demand, they're not going to necessarily listen to it at one o'clock on uh, on Monday. They could listen to it two or three late, days later. They're going to be looking for it. And so if you're consistent on the same date and time, you, we're all creatures of habit. And what we want is we want our listeners to be in the habit of listening. So if they know one o'clock, and you don't even have to say this, like my weight loss in the mind, we always launched it uh, Monday morning or made it live Monday morning and then one week for some reason Wednesday like we didn't think about it was that we were always that consistent but we were and then on Tuesday we had a whole pile of emails from our listeners saying are you guys okay there was no podcast on Monday we were worried about you <laughs> we didn't wow. even know that it, like we never said every Monday at one o'clock you'll hear wow. us right it was when it was and when it wasn't they were all like, ah, that's but amazing. When you, think, when you think about TV, when you think about radio shows, they're all on at the same time. At the same so time. You want to have that consistency. And it's so easy to do because all you have to do is do it three or four days in advance or do it once a month for the whole month and then just have it scheduled. The software looks after it and it's not a, you know, it's not a big deal. That's amazing. So, Scott, you're saying you could actually pre-record some of your podcasts. Well, all, most all podcasts really are pre-recorded. They're not live. Because, you know, I had somebody ask me the other day, how, how do I do one podcast a day? Isn't that a lot of work to consistently podcast every day? It can be a lot of work. It depends on, uh, really depends on whether you want to be CBC or BBC quality. 
or if you're just going to record like you know you can get on you can turn on the record button on audacity which is a free program on your computer plug in your mic talk for 10 minutes upload that if you want but i think you should do a little post-production and clean it up usually a little bit put a little music at the beginning and the end but after you've done something 10 or 15 times it's pretty much burnt into your head and you know exactly how you're going to say what you're going to say. The actual content, like there's three parts, right? There's the beginning. Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Scott. He's Gordon. We're going to talk about this, that, and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then there's the end. Thank you very much for listening to the show. I'm Scott. He's Gordon. See you next time. Appreciate you guys. Bye-bye. So, you know, you can write out those two little scripts and practice until it just becomes second nature, right? Mm -hmm. The name of the show, the subtitle of the show, a little bit about what you're about, what they can expect. Um, I was just coaching one of my longtime podcasting clients, and I was telling him, you know, he went in through this whole long thing at the beginning, which was boring, to be quite honest, because it was all about him. He was, mm. you know, post, you know, share this on Facebook and post this on Twitter and do this here and do that there. It's like, well, dude, you're giving us too much uh -huh. work. And, and why should we listen? That was the first question you need to ask, answer, right? And so I said to him, I said, you know what? Whenever you watch TV, it's particularly the news, mm -hmm. they'll say, fire in New York, 3,000 people homeless, details after and whatever, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, oh, man, now I got to, I want to know about that. I got to listen. So I told him that. And he says, oh, okay. All right. So we're going to talk about millennials and, and, and leadership. But first, and then he went into a little bit of a spiel. So he gave everybody a reason to listen, and yeah. then, uh, and then well, told them the stuff that you want. So basically, you have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end. And you practice being very similar on the beginning and the end. And if you put a little bit of music under each bowl, each end, so people know this is the start, this is the end. Uh, then you can you really once you get down to, you, particularly if you're a beginner speaker, there's lots of ahs and ums and souls mm. because we're not used to silence mm. right? i just did a course with a speech coach and she was amazing because she used silence like a pro right? she'd be talking away and then she'd want this dramatic pause to come in and she would just stop mm. and i'm there like is she finished talking or not and then she continued i realized that was the you know she was making that impact but when we're nervous, we're just starting mm. out. We're, we're scared of the mic. We're scared of the of the camera. We 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 stutter and we do that. We, we lose our thoughts. We, all these things happen. And so in the beginning, there's lots of oh, I got to take that part out and that part out and that part out. But as you get better, and as you listen to your recordings, which is hard to do, because mm. we never think we sound good. <laughs> we're very critical. Don't be critical. But look, listen for the ums and the ahs and the so's. So is an amazing I, I, I like word. the so's. Yeah, <laughs> you do. But, <laughs> yeah, you think I'm calling you by your last name. That's every right. Time we call, I would like so what, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Scott, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to cut off you, cut you off, but you mentioned about one of your podcasts, well, Wellness and, and Mindset, I think. Yes, um, I know. I know. Often you don't want to talk about. Um, you're too humble to talk about your success. But um, you were in Toronto. You did a presentation, uh, training for one of our groups on online courses. But you mentioned um, that particular podcast. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was like two hundred or three hundred thousand subscribers. Or what did you have for that show? After one year, in the in the first year, we had three hundred and seventy five thousand subscribers wow. and three quarters of a million downloads. Oh, that's crazy. So let me ask you this, Scott. If somebody has a podcast, so let's say if I'm an author speaker uh, and I had that many downloads from iTunes, what could that do for my for my business? And the reason why I'm asking that is, you know, a lot of our clients, they're on Facebook right, or on Instagram or they're on YouTube. And I know people have a lot of time putting out YouTube videos. And unless you're Donald Trump and you're getting all this noise, right? Um some people are struggling to get 10 views, 20 views, 50 views. And then you hear somebody like yourself with um, three quarter million downloads on iTunes. That's, that's crazy. Right. Yeah. So, so what would that do for someone's business uh, when you can get that many eyeballs or people listening? Well, there's a couple things that can do for, for a business. And you, it kind of reminds me of uh, 
Well, it's like this. I'm assuming you want to speak on stage and I'm assuming you know what stages you want to speak on. So you go to Gordon and you say, Gordon, I want to speak on your stage. And he says, Scott, you know, you're a nice guy, but really, dude, why would I have you on my stage? And I say, well, Gordon, your whole audience and your whole conference is on fitness and health and and weight loss and that sort of thing. Right. He goes, yeah, well, my podcast has, uh, 375,000 subscribers. So mm. when I tell them I'm going to be going and speaking somewhere, then the people that are within about 100 miles will probably come and uh, and hear mm. me speak. So now Gordon's going, oh, great. Scott's going to bring, might bring 100, might bring 200, might bring 300 mm. people to my venue, which holds, you know, two or three or 4,000 people depending, you know, depending on what the situation is, right, mm. obviously. And because uh, I know that people from across the country will fly to hear people speak across the country, right? I mean, people, when you, who hasn't gone to some sort of event and someone said, where are you from? And, you know, someone says, well, you know, I'm from two miles down the road. And then somebody else says, I'm from Australia. It's like, what? Mm. Yeah, I just came to this because I wanted to see Gordon. And I knew he was at this event. Oh, okay. So I think what it gives you is huge credibility. And that's what you really want more than uh, anything else, right? Because you can build off the reputation and the credibility. Wow, you, I've got this many people that are avid fans of my show. Then you can take that to anybody and say, and leverage it and just say, you know mm. what? I would like to write a book. Mm. And, you know, the book publishers are all going to go, well, like, you never heard of you, dude. You say, oh, I have 300,000 subscribers on my weight loss podcast. Great. Sign here. We'll do a book. Wow. And, you know, those sort of things happen all the time. That's actually because- interesting. Scott, that's interesting. A friend of mine right here in Toronto, um, he actually wrote a book called The Best Laid Plans and went to every publisher you can imagine. He got turned down and he started a podcast of all things. And he just started reading one chapter at a time. To make a long story short, he's got, I think it's either his I know he's wrote and published at least four books now. He's been pu- picked up by a major uh, publisher. He's won like all kinds of awards. He's, his book's been uh, turned into a TV series on CBC. Nice. Absolutely incredible. He's like, he's won the Stephen Leacock Award for Humor, et cetera. And it all started because he got turned down by one and he started podcasting. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Wow, we should have him on the show. He would come on. He would absolutely come on. You, you know, you would actually love his books. I'll send you, um, I'll send you the um, um, Terry Faldus. His name is Terry Faldus. You would love his books. Yeah, yeah. We should definitely should interview him. Get him on. He would come on. Get him on my podcast. I think he would. <laughs> Scott, I love what would to you, hear stories like that. What would you say to um, um, if somebody's never podcasted before, started a podcast? What would you say to him right now? And they want to? Let's say they want to, right? What What are the benefits? Of, why wouldn't I just blog, let's say? Or why wouldn't I put a video on YouTube? I Well, one of the things I tell everybody is you should get rid of the word or. Okay. Should, should I put a video on YouTube or should I write a blog or should I podcast or should I post on Facebook? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. You should Got do it. all of those things. And I'm a huge proponent of doing something like this. We do this blab, and then I take the video, I edit the video, I put it up on YouTube. I take the audio, the audio is edited from editing the video, and there is a program that basically extracts the audio from the video, takes three minutes. So we're not talking about any arduous work on my part. And then I put it up on my podcast. The third thing, which I don't normally do, but you know, I think you should, (laughs) <laughs> do as I say, not as I do in this case, uh, is find a really good transcriber, uh, either here or over in some place like the Philippines, get it transcribed, then have an editor wow. go through and take out the ums and the so's, okay. and, <laughs> which means it'll just be me talking, he'll be yep. gone. And, uh, and then you've got a blog post, and so you can take snippets mm-hmm. of that if there's a really good quote, because yes. let's talk about the brain for a second. This is the right side. This is the left side. The left side is the one that goes one plus one is two. If you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, this is the side of your brain that you're using a lot. If you're a speaker and you're up in front of talking to people, this is the side 
that's creative that way and the verbal skills and blah, blah, blah. The problem is this side is where a lot of the memory is and this side, there's not a lot of the memory. So when you're interviewing somebody and talking, the chances are 10 minutes after you're finished, you will not recall a thing you said. Mm. That is normal. That's because you're accessing that part of your mind that's creative, that's flowing, that actually con connects to that part of his mind. And so you have this conversation. But just watch when you do something where you're talking and explaining and then somebody says, wow, it's brilliant. What did you say? And you go, no clue. I don't know. And that <laughs> happened at our reverse marketing thing yes. with Dwayne, yes. remember? He said something and I just, I didn't think. Like yes. there was no thinking involved. It just blooped out and he went, wow, right? So of course now what he does is he has a little recorder before he asks any question. He makes sure he's ready to push Good record because nobody remembers what's said because we're using the right hand side of yes. the brain. So yeah. when you do the transcription, what that means is when you read through, you go, oh, Gordon said something really smart here. Mm. Pull that out, take a picture of Gordon, stick the text on the side. Now you've got a um, social media meme that could be shared thousands and thousands of times. Well, that's amazing. So you're saying you could repurpose a, a podcast into um, snippets for, for Twitter, for, for blogs, et cetera. Let me ask you this, Scott. Somebody also said to me, if you, I'll give you an example. Uh, Randy Goodman, who's the founder of the Toronto Women's Expo, mm -hmm. um, has been working with you a lot, and she has a podcast called the Empowerment Radio Show. Um, yes. It's kind of neat, because I remember when Randy started, like what you said, if you listen to her first episode and you listen to her hundredth episode now, I think she said 115 or 116. I mean, it's day and night, right? The ums, yes. the ahs, the nervousness. And now she sounds and, like. And if you listen to her hundredth now and you listen to her 300th, it'll be the same. It'll interesting. Be like, wow. Because we grow and we grow and we grow when we do this work. Yes. Well, what I was going to ask you is all these stories, she's been interviewing all kinds of entrepreneurs. All kinds of them, um, and you know some of their challenges, some of their successes. What what could you do with some of those stories? I heard some people say you could actually take your 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 interviews and turn them into um, and turn them into a book. Would you recommend yeah. something like that? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Kindle is really hot, and and you can have print on demand books. I think you know turning your podcast into a book is an excellent idea. In mm -hmm. fact, I just did a course with Daniel Hall on how to I do saw that. that. <laughs> and we went through that whole process and it's just like, yeah, like if you plan out 10 chapters in your book and that's 10 audio talks and then you get it edited and then, or transcribed and then edited and then somebody puts it up on Kindle and somebody else formats it for print on demand, away you go. And the only concern is making sure that you're totally upfront with your guests. Yes, right? yes. So, you know, I'm going to be recording you, Gordon. We're going to talk about these. These are the topics I want to talk about. Uh, I've, I've sent you an email telling you that I will give you a copy and you can use it however you want. And I'm going to use it however I want. So, if you, you know, and, and you don't have to tell them. You can even say, you know, I'm thinking about doing a book. and I'm going to take this and, and have it in my book. So you're going to get some free publicity that way. Right. Yes. You know, and so. Uh, that's incredible because that's that's such a cost effective way to actually become a published author. Um, mm -hmm. Scott, I was in um, um, Chicago a few weeks ago doing an event um, and a training down there teaching people how to speak and sell from stage. And what really shocked me was one of our participants in the event, she, she was telling me she had spent $30,000, like $30,000 just to learn how to write and publish a book. I mean, my, wow. I almost dropped. Like, I felt so bad for this young lady who had spent 30 grand learning how to write and publish a book. I mean, that's, that's a down payment on a house, right? And whereas, so there's so many different ways you could do it. And one of your strategies, I remember you sharing it in Toronto. That's why I you know, wanted you to talk about it. And that is you can podcast, obviously get permission from the person you're interviewing, get it transcribed, get it edited. And it's so easy, like you said, um, to go and sell, publish it, make it a one bestseller on Amazon. Or now there's so many little, so many places like Create Space or local printers where you can actually print your book on on demand, and you've got a nice business card you can use anywhere you go. So, That's right. That's right. You know, it all works together, right? If you've yes. got a successful 
to a podcast, if you've got courses on Udemy, if you have a book, uh, if you have a presentation that's really amazing from the stage, then you have all the tools that you need, and then you have a product that you sell on the back end. You have all the tools you need to, to be successful in whatever your area is, if you're, particularly if you're teaching people something.